Alrighty, so today we're going to be looking at independent events with complementary events. So if you leave, live in the town of Bad Haven, the probability of your car being stolen on a public street in any year is 0 0.45, and the probability of your house being burgled is 0 0.6. If the events are independent, determine the probability that in the year the following things will happen. A, your car is stolen but your house is not burgled, and B, your house is burgled but your car is not stolen. Well. Let's say C is the event that your car is stolen and H is the event that your house is burgled. Well, the probability that your car is stolen is 0 0.45, which means that the probability that your car is not stolen would be 0 0.55. And that means the probability of your house getting burgled is going to be 0 0.6, while your probability of your house not being burgled well, that's going to be 0 0.4. Now, because these are independent events, it means we can use that multiplication rule, and that multiplication rule is great. So your car is stolen, but your house is not burgled. So this is for A. Well, the probability that your car is stolen, but your house is not burgled. So it's and, not H. Well, that's just equal to 0 0.45 times 0 0.4, which is 0 0.18. That's it. Because they're independent events, it means we can use this rule. If they weren't independent, we couldn't use that rule. So then the second one says, what's the probability that your house is burgled, but your car is not stolen? Well, it's going to be 0 0.6 for your house getting burgled and 0 0.55 for it not getting stolen, which is 0 0.33. And there we go. That's how easy it can be once we know that the events are independent. And because these are all complementary events, it means figuring out its partner is as easy as finding what adds up to one. See you in the next one. Goodbye.